Hello everyone. In this video, I'll walk you through how to build a basic data entry web application using Python and Streamlit with Google Sheets as our database. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to read from and write to Google Sheets and how to create user interfaces using Streamlit. So let's start with the first app. As you can see, I've got the web app up and running. In the sidebar, we have a simple form for data entry. Let's go ahead and fill it out and hit submit. And there it is, the data has been successfully added. What's great is that the table below also supports sorting and filtering, making it easy to manage the entries. Now, if we switch over to Google Sheets, you'll see the updated entry reflected there as well. Pretty cool, right? What's even more amazing is how little code it took to build this application. That's it for this first demo. Now, moving on to the second demo, this time we're stepping things up by generating a form based on a schema. Using a form schema makes constructing and editing forms a lot easier and more flexible. First, let me show you how it works. After submitting the form, you can see that the data has been added successfully. And just like before, the Google Sheet has been updated. If you are liking this video, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm not necessarily suggesting that you build your data entry app this way, but I want to demonstrate how you can pull data from Google Sheets into a Pandas data frame and use Streamlit to create simple UIs like tables and forms. Streamlit is particularly well-suited for data analysis projects, AI or language model-based web apps, and showcasing analytics. Think of this project as a starting point for building more advanced applications. All right, let's jump into the code now. You can get the code from my GitHub repository. Link is in the description below. You can also read the related instructions. This block of code imports the necessary libraries. We're using Gspread to interact with Google Sheets, service account credentials from OAuth2 client, to handle Google API authentication, Streamlit for building our web app interface, and Pandas for working with data in a structured format. The next block defines the function connect to G Sheet. This function handles the authentication and connection to Google Sheets. First, it defines the required scopes, which are the permissions needed to interact with the Sheets and Drive API. Then it uses the service account credentials to authenticate with the provided credentials file, and finally, it connects to a specific Google Sheet and returns a worksheet object based on the sheet name provided. I will show you how to get the credentials JSON file towards the end of the video. In this block, three global variables are declared. Spreadsheet name is the name of the Google Sheet we're connecting to. Sheet name is the specific worksheet name within that Google Sheet. And credentials file is the path to the JSON credentials file that will be used for authentication. The following line connects to the Google Sheet by calling connect to G Sheet. This uses the credentials file, spreadsheet name, and sheet name to establish the connection. The returned worksheet object is stored in the variable sheet by name. Next, this block defines the title for our Streamlit app using st.title. Here, we're giving the web app a simple title, simple data entry using Streamlit. This block defines the red data function. It reads all the records from the connected Google Sheet by using the getAllRecords method and returns the data as a pandas data frame for easy handling and display. The addData function is defined in this block. It takes a list representing a row of data and appends it to the Google Sheet using the appendRow method. This allows us to add new entries to the spreadsheet. Now in this block, we define a form inside the sidebar of the Streamlit app. The sidebar is used for data entry and it includes three fields, name, age, and email. Within the form, there's also a submit button. 
When clicked, it checks if the user has entered valid data in the name and email fields. If the validation passes, it calls the add data function to append the new row to the Google Sheet and a success message is displayed. If the validation fails, an error message prompts the user to correct the input. In this block, we define a header for the main view of the app using st.header. Below this header, the data from the Google Sheet is displayed in a table format. The read data function is called to retrieve the data from the sheet and it's stored in a data frame. Finally, this block of code displays data table using sct.dataframe. You can also provide width and height of the table. Now let's review the code for the task form. In this version of the code, we're still working with Google Sheets and Streamlit, but there are some notable differences compared to the previous example. Let me explain what's different. The most significant difference in this version is the introduction of schema-based form generation and validation. Instead of hard coding individual form fields like before, we're now defining a form schema that outlines the structure and validation rules for each form field. This makes the form dynamic and flexible. The form schema defines the structure of the form fields, including task name. It's a text input required and has validation rules to ensure the task name is between three and 50 characters. Project. This is a drop down or select field with predefined options like Project A, Project B, and Project C. It's also a required field. Due date, a date input required with validation ensuring that the due date is in the future. Description, a text area for additional task details with a maximum length of 200 characters, but this field is optional. This schema-driven approach lets us dynamically render the form fields based on the schema, rather than manually creating each input like before. The new function render form is responsible for rendering the form dynamically using the schema. It loops over the schema and creates the appropriate input type, text input, drop down, date picker, or text area, based on the field definitions. This makes the code more modular and scalable, especially if we want to add more fields in the future. Another new feature in this version is form validation based on the schema. The validate form function uses the rules defined in the schema to check if the submitted data is valid. For example, it ensures that required fields are filled, text inputs meet the length requirements, and the due date is valid. Now let's talk about how to set up service account credentials, which is essential for allowing your app to interact with Google Sheets. First, open your browser and type Google Cloud Console into Google. Click on the first link that takes you to console.cloud.google.com. Once you're on the Google Cloud Console homepage, make sure you're signed in with the Google account you want to use for your project. Next, create a new project. Click on the project drop down at the top then click New Project. Give your project a name and click Create. It may take a few seconds to set up. Once your project is ready, navigate to the APIs and Services section from the left-hand menu. Then click on Library. In the search bar, type Google Sheets API. Click on it and then click the Enable button to activate the API for your project. Now head over to the Credentials tab on the left-hand menu. Here, click on Create Credentials and from the drop-down, select Service Account. Fill out the details like the service account name and click Create. Once your service account is created, you'll need to generate a key. Go to the Keys section under your service account and click Add Key.
Choose JSON as the file format, and it will automatically download a JSON file to your system. Now let's prepare this file for use in our project. Move the downloaded JSON file to your project folder. I recommend renaming it to something simple like credentials.json for easier access when writing your code. One more important step. Before your app can access your Google Sheets, you need to share your sheet with the service account. Open the Google Sheet you'll be using, click on Share, and in the dialog, copy the service account email address. You can grab this email from the file containing credentials. Paste that into the sharing field and give it editor permissions. Hit Share, and now your service account is ready to interact with the Google Sheet. That's it. You've successfully set up the service account, downloaded the credentials file, and shared your Google Sheet with the account. Now you're all set to authenticate and start reading or writing data using the API. That's it for the code walkthrough. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.